Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Ariana, but you can call me Ari. And today, for the first video of this new year, we're going to go over all the books that I may or may not have read in the month of December. And I'm going to share with you my top three books I read in 2023. So let's let's get started. I'm sitting outside today. I've got a cup of tea and I... I just wanted a change of scenery, I guess, and I needed some sun. I woke up this morning with a bit of anxiety and a little bit of stress just about the new year and the new things I'm starting and things that I want to start but don't know where to start. And I just needed to step outside. I went for a nice long walk. I didn't listen to music. I didn't listen to a podcast or watch a video. I just kind of listened to my own thoughts and you know it really eased my mind so I feel a lot better going into this new year now than I did when I first woke up um, just kind of taking the start of the new year slowly as slowly as I can and you know even if things are going fast around you and you have a lot going on and your days are busy you can still you can still go through your day with grace and slowness and ease and just take a breath and take a second to ground yourself no matter what you're doing just take a moment and just take a breath so that's what I did and I already feel so much better sitting out here my cat's out here he's hanging out with me so you might see him run around a little bit um, and I did some yoga today we did some yoga together and it was just a nice easy start to the day I have a class later this afternoon so yeah I'm just gonna take it moment by moment and enjoy enjoy the day so yeah let's just get started uh, and talk about all the books I read in December so if you watched my ambitious delusional TBR video you would know that I wanted to complete four different books by the end of the year and I managed to read three of those books um oh shoot there's a book that I forgot um so here's the thing so I didn't mention reading let us descend because I had read this before I started booktube so all the books that I mentioned in my TBR video for the last two weeks of December are these three and uh bittersweet um by Susan Cain which is in my room but it doesn't matter so much because I didn't get to it at all I didn't read a single page of that book it didn't make it I had a feeling it wasn't going to make it um, because it wasn't a huge that's my cat chasing my ring light uh, cord it's just kind of in the grass and he's attacking it um, and I just knew I wasn't probably gonna get to it, but if I did, I did. If I didn't, I didn't, so that's totally fine. Um, the ones that we did get to were these. Now, I did not finish The Artist's Way. I know, I fell off. I included this in my vlog, my reading vlog, and I said that I had gotten up to halfway of this little artist creativity workbook, and I just fell off it's not bad it's 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 great and it has a lot of good information I just need to continue reading it I just need to put myself make myself do it just make myself finish it's really good information I just fell off so I didn't read any more of this that's okay that's okay but I did finish parable of the talents y'all I really enjoyed this I ate this up um, in comparison to the first book, this one is a lot more action-packed. Um, we are really in the thick of Earthseed. We are seeing it in practice, and we are seeing what it looks like when Earthseed is up against other uh, communities, other cults. And this was the first time in this novel um, that I thought about Earthseed as a cult. Like, it didn't occur to me that, like, to the outside, we, because we are seeing this from Lauren's vantage point, we see the creation of Earthseed, at least I did, as something 
of purity and like I guess when I think of cult I think of like the worst things I think of brainwashing I think of manipulation I think of um, extreme ideas being kind of infiltrated in people's minds um, and preying on vulnerability and the weak but if you think about it Lauren has some similar tactics a lot of the people she picks up are lost are lonely are uncertain of where to go and who to be and a lot of people are because the world has pretty much gone through a, a, a cleanse like it's been wiped clean and they're trying to put it back together and the man in charge the president is very similar to that of the previous president we had and there is a quote that says uh make america great again and it's something that is very uh known about this book in her series that she really does a good job of creating our future that looks so startlingly, startlingly similar to our past and if you think about it if i really think about what could the future look like this is so close to the reality of it all that what actually happens is that we're actually stripped of our basic rights of our necessities big companies are taking over education people are being put into camps um so we're seeing a lot of history repeating but also it's the future and it's this like stripping down of of what we had worked so hard to have and still struggle to attain and it's so good i just love i love it very happy i was able to make this happen because Oh, her writing is so good. Her symbolism is so good. She uses fire and water as like a way of symbolizing rebirth and growth and change and transformation and destruction, but also something that can heal. It's just so, so good and so well thought and so, mm, five out of five, five million out of five, you know? So really happy I got to that. And then we did finish Out There Screaming, edited by Jordan Peele. I made a uh, bookstagram post about, it's gone now because I have since revamped my bookstagram. I had like a moment on the 30th, th in the 31st of like, I just want my bookstagram to look different and I am working on what that means. But I did have a review of this. I unfortunately deleted it. But basically, I enjoyed nine out of the 19 stories in this. And that's huge. That's half, that's more than half of the stories in here. And I just think the way that these writers and the writers that Jordan Peele helped to select really do reflect the way he sees horror and the ways that horror can evolve even the ones i didn't gravitate to the most even the ones i didn't like enjoy the most those were all so well written so well thought out and just made me think but also made me uncomfortable and made me scared me they take these kind of themes and social issues and cultural issues and spiritual practices and use use them as a pilot as a way to navigate through the horror in it and sometimes the stories are more subtle on the horror sometimes they're very obvious but i appreciate the subtlety i appreciate the quality of writers it felt like it was super deliberate it was super conscious in who got into this book and it was really good really strong really 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 strong so the next one i read is let us descend let us descend by jasmine ward this one was so beautiful it was so sad it was so heartbreaking it was so lyrical it was super metaphorical and magical and spiritual and this is a story of a girl named Annis who is sentenced to a long journey from a long walk um, from North Carolina to New Orleans 
during uh, the slave trade and she is sentenced to be sold on the slave market in Louisiana. And there are a lot of symbolisms that relate to this title. One is the obvious descent of going from North Carolina to New Orleans, being stripped of the things that made you who you were. She is parted from some people that she loves and she loses um, herself on the way. But along the way, she starts to recall memories of her warrior grandmother. Her mom instilled in her the importance of being able to fight and wield a weapon and know how to move quick and dodge and pierce and uh, be a warrior. And so when uh, she has these recollections of her grandmother and the stories her mother told her, she manifests these spirits and they start to appear and represent earth and wind and her ancestors and water and they kind of guide her along her journey but some of these spirits you know if you want something from them they're gonna want something from you and there was a sense of betrayal and a sense of entitlement from these spirits some were really helpful some were steering her in a direction she wasn't wanting to go in and she had to grow into her own choices and decide for herself how am i going to liberate myself and what choices do i have to make in order to live the life I want to live and there are moments that are so beautiful here there are some the quotes the beginning line of this novel had me just like lose my mind it goes the first weapon I ever held was my mother's hand I mean that is such a beautiful and so the whole book is that way you're The beauties of being outside in filming. Yes. All right. And it's very powerful. Oh my God. There's a cat. He's climbing the fence. You see him? It's kind of blurry, but that's Max. He is a cat that we kind of, that adopted us. He kind of appeared one day and never left. So sometimes they scale the fence. There's a lot going on out here. Um, so just go into this knowing that it's heavy on the magical realism and it's heavy on the like lyric lyricism. One thing I love about Jasmine Ward is that she's not afraid to let, she's not afraid to go there. She's not afraid to try something. And her writing is so different because she really lets herself go lean in she leans in to the lyricism to the magical realism to the spirituality of it all and she really pushes the gas on it so i could say so much about this book i loved it just know that sometimes it for me at least it did get a little difficult to follow but i feel like there's something to say versus it being difficult to follow because the writing's bad versus it being difficult to follow because we're following a difficult story that is not easy to explain and she takes a very metaphysical spiritual approach to it that requires a little bit more patience and if you have some patience and if you love some magical realism and some lyr lyricism and some historical fiction mixed in with it you'll really like this and i'm sure a lot of people have read it at this point it is um one of the most popular i don't know if it did it win something on goodreads i don't really pay attention to awards or whatever but like i know that it's a very popular book and uh for rightfully so so Go Jasmine Ward, keep writing those amazing, amazing books. Now we're going to move on to my top three favorite books of the year. Um, I only read 15 books, so. I had a small selection, but you've seen me talk about these books. If you watched my video of my 2023 or 2024 goals and all the books I read in 2020 three you've seen these books um but the first one that is my favorite of the year is read until you understand by farrah jasmine griffin this is a memoir and she comes at this from a academic standpoint and she talks about and reflects on the beauty the uh the complexity of black life and literature and she uses different excerpts from james baldwin tony morrison um 
Frederick Douglass, so many to name a few that uh, she uses to highlight some of these experiences. And it's not just what she writes, it's the way she writes. She writes so well and so strong. And uh, this is a great book if you're looking to figure out how to get into some literature, some black classics and black literature. Um, she'll give you some examples and she'll give you some there's like an index in the back too of all of the you know quotes and um excerpts she uses but this was a favorite this was a recommendation from um someone who worked at a bookstore that i just kind of stumbled into and she was like have you heard of her and i was like no and so i'm so glad i do now know of Farrah jasmine griffin because she also has a second book that pulls on text from more recent times like she talks a little bit about barack obama and she talks a little bit about um, our current political climate so i'm looking forward to grabbing that from the same bookstore um, sometime soon so this was a favorite the next favorite of mine is The Perfect Ruin by Shanora Williams. This book helped get me out of a reading slump and helped me just pick up in my reading. It is a book that features an unreliable narrator. She is out to seek revenge uh, from this woman who at some point in her life had done something terrible to her to ruin her life. For the majority of the book we don't know what this other woman did to cause our unreliable main character to seek revenge but we find out eventually and the way she goes about seeking this revenge the way she manipulates the way she befriends her and makes the woman almost just fall in love with herself even more it just is so good and it's a surprising twisty ending it's a fast read i probably read this in like two days um so if you are looking for something that's a little bit uh easier read to start or to get you back into the habit of reading this is a great one for sure i'm surprised i hadn't heard of it before now and um <laughs> No surprise here, my third last favorite book of the year is Parable of the Talents by Octavia Butler. I enjoyed this more than I enjoyed the first one, um, just because the first one was definitely like a setup book. It was setting up the scene for Earthseed, setting up the scene for who Lauren was, and then in the second one we get to follow her daughter and get to understand her daughter more and other uh parts of her family we get to see how they think and how they differ in the way Lauren thinks and we get to compare Lauren's own beliefs and practices with that of others and it makes you question you know based off of who's telling the story who do we believe who do we trust and who do we think is doing the right thing and man I just I'll say it again Octavia writes characters so well the complexity of these characters the symbolism it's the subtext she has such a good good sense of subtext things that characters are saying but not really saying so i'm gonna shut up about this because i've probably talked about this in every video i've made thus far so i will let it go we read it it was amazing so good so yeah those are all the books that i got to in december and my top three favorite reads these are all the lovely books that made it that made it through um and yeah thank y'all so much for watching again thank y'all so much for the kindness and support in the comments um please do like this video not only does it make my heart so very happy but it shows the algorithm that i'm doing something right and will suggest me to other like-minded viewers like yourself so feel free to let me know what one three five six ten of your favorite books may have been for 2023 i am so looking forward to continuing this journey on with y'all in 2024 there's going to be some good things to come um we're going to start imp implementing some yoga practices some um ideas for reading books and practicing yoga um so stay tuned for that and yeah i hope to see y'all in the next one have a wonderful start to your new year Mwah!